Good night, fellow pulchers. The clock on the wall says two minutes past 11 on Friday night, a bit later than I had hoped for. But uh, I was umpiring at a GA match over in West Roscommon. It didn't get started until... Uh, oh, no, start on time. But uh, there was no one else behind the goal. There was awful delays with the ball going out. Um, not that long back. To having a cup of tea as I am talking to you. Uh, didn't see any racing tonight. Seen to seven o'clock. I thought we got up for fifth. Uh, that horse went out to 33 to one before the off. That's when I had a few pounds on it each way and I had it in a lucky 15. We I just looked at the results when it came in because I had no internet over there uh, at all on the phone. Um, we were unlucky, bet a nose out of a place ahead and a length. I was just sort of making it up roughly. If the three of them had placed, you'd be having nearly six times your stake back. But um, we had a good enough day. We had our nap winning, uh, get ahead, uh, hosed up. Um, that opened up four to one yesterday, which was threes last night when I was doing the video. A lot of money for it overnight. Finished seven to four. And I thought we were on a winner at the furlong pole uh, with Hydro playing. That was 16s without the 18s. Um, and a bus horse who hadn't won on the turf before, first emperor, done a good turn for us. Excuse me, in uh, Kempton, wasn't it, in January. Uh, I didn't even do a reverse forecast. Because I didn't think he was as good on the turf. Um, but anyway, I have a few for tomorrow. There was a lot of stuff I could have had. But I weeded them out. I think I have four. And a view on the guineas. Um, the Temple Stakes tomorrow. This is good to firm ground. I was very sweet on Twilight Calls the last day. But the rain came against it. I wouldn't mind. We had two nice winners that day. Um, Northern Express was one, and there was one on the flat, Gary Moore's. But it, it came raining that day in Newmarket. But this was second last year on Good to Ferrum Ground in a Group 1. In the King's Stand Stake. And if you left the Australian horse down under, it would have won that day. Um, the run will bring it on tomorrow. It's a five to one shot, but we'll back it each way. They're paying four places. Sort of can't see it being out of the first four, you know. Uh, I'm going around there. That damn phone. Yeah, they're paying four places. So. That's Haydock. Uh, Haydock as well. Um, the 150. This opened up 3 to 1 earlier on. Law of the Sea. This would be the nap of the day. I had it down as the nap of the day at 3 to 1, but it'll drift again probably. But if you look back at its career, it used to be with John Gosden. Um, It was fifth, going back in Ascot in the Queen's Vaz. It ran a good race. That was over a mile six. It was a stayer, you know, the Camary, Worsworth, Stowell, Bernard, uh, Taipan. Um, it ran well that day. Um, it was up its pace all the way. It only died late on. But then it went to Medan, out to Seymour and done no good at all. But the last day in the Chester Cup, it isn't the first time that Ian Williams has brought back one. He done the very same with Enemy last year. But this went off a 40 to 1 shot. As we joined the race, it's with the white cap, it'll be on the rail and the black colours, back about 7th or 8th. Keep an eye on it.
So we're entering the closing stages of the Tote Chester Cup. I mean, kicking on now, pressing on inside the three. Call my bluff, yellow cap, giving chase. Then Al Zarakhan, Rajinsky, orange jacket being angled out. Zoffy around the field, the black sleeves, then calling the wind. I mean, inside the last two furlongs, three lengths ahead. Call my bluff is chasing. Then the Palmer pair of Rajinsky and Zoffy calling the wind. Metier away to the left is running on under pressure. Then Law of the Sea inside the furlong, call my bluff noses ahead, Zoffy is challenging here's Metier over the top charging home, then Law of the Sea just Zoffy, call my bluff Metier getting ever closer and it's very close it might have been Metier under Safi Osborne who pulled it out of the park The soft ground would probably have been against it, but seldom you see a 40 to 1 shot and the at the end of it, 2 miles 2 race and the jockey standing up in the stirrups with plenty of horse left. I had him marked out, was waiting for him to run again. But uh, he's up against Carzola. Carzola has won a few. It was on the bounce, but it, it was impressive enough the last year, but it wasn't up against a lot in uh, Doncaster. So one off 69, 77, 81. Now it's up £10 up to 91. I think this other yoke is classy enough. The ground is good to firm, but when it it did run on good to firm ground before, so I'm hoping uh, that that would would win tomorrow. So that's two at um Haydock. Um, there's one at Chester that I like a bit as well, and uh, the four o five. Um, when we look at when we looked at this race the last day. We had the winner of this, Revich. And Red Mirage had won it the previous year when it was with Andrew Balding. Moved to John Quinn. Um, it, it goes well in Chester. As you can see, it was uh, second uh, last July. It won that year and uh, won a couple of races in uh, Chester. But it ran on the last. It was the first run for the for the yard. Um, Revish gets a great split, but he sort of finishes well, and I thought he come on well for the run. A lot of John Quinns do come on well for the run after oh, switching the yards. Red Mirage and Revish in the light blue up the inside, and then so he's third last there now, being bustled up in rear as they swing for home with a quarter mile left to go. Wob 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 is pressing on in front. Guido uh, throwing down the challenge. Purse is loud, the blue and yellow. Heat of the moment in a white jacket. Revich in the light blue trying to thread his way through. Al Rafar was hampered. Boardman is out wide inside the furlong. Revich has come storming through to take over here. Found daylight where he needed it. Begins to power on. They're bunching in behind, but they're bunching for places only. Revich away and gone. Witch Hunter flew home to grab second. Tight third. Percy's lad. Re so Percy's lad is, is the favourite there. Pause for thought. That has won a couple of races, but it's gone up in the weights. Uh, no, it went off last the last like a scalded cat. It finished third, didn't it? Yeah, third. But that was fourth behind behind uh one in Chester the fifth of May two thousand twenty one. I thought that one would come on for the run, Red Mirage. And then uh at Salisbury tomorrow night we've a uh, stakes a listed race, six furlongs. Rohan won the Wokingham last year, hasn't ran at all this year, carrying nine stone twelve. He's the top rated in the race at one hundred and thirteen. Joint with Run to Freedom, but uh, Sandrine back at at six. I think he'll be all right. I prefer nearly if to seven. We've seen this lately. Um, running with against Sacred and Sacred sort of a, a group, a group one, Philly. We were on uh, Queen Aminato that day each way. 
and fives was late money for it finished at 72. Angel followed by White Moonlight, Sandrine is well in touch. Behind these is Nizaka, Sacred now making very good progress in the red, white, sash, blue cap, peeling out a little wide from Queen Aminatu. Candle of Hope, here comes Sandrine, challenging hard with Secret Angel and Sacred thundering down the outside. Sandrine took over, here's Sacred, her old rival though, and Sacred goes sweeping on by, and Sacred lengthening impressively to win the Chartwell. From Sandrine, Queen, Am Queen Aminatu. Died a bit there at seven, back to six, fast six, I think might suit it. Um, brings this. There's a couple, of, there's one more at Chester there we're looking at. Pontelius, uh, we won on it before, and then it screwed us one time in December in the. We were on Bandinelli. Um, that made the short list, but it didn't. I'm, not, I'm only putting up four. Uh, Corker likes uh, York. Um, and we'll go to the corner just to have a quick look at the at the guineas. It's on tomorrow. Um, we have a few that ran in the English 2000 guineas. We have Royal Scotsman who ran with the choke out. He had his head up in there and didn't settle and was pulling. He finished uh, third. High Royal was all over the shop, didn't run straight. Um, Royal Scotsman was supplemented for this race. I don't know how much it cost. Probably cost a fair penny. But Proud and Regal was going to go to the Derby and they redirected to this. And these are fairly shrewd operators. I'm trying to read between the lines. Won the Criterium last year at a mile in uh, France. It was second in a group one. Um, but they were going to go... I, I just, this was seven to one earlier. And I thought, proud and regal. The boys won't be wanting to relinquish the the trophy to handy. Native trail. like There's no native trail in that uh, this year. And he's into five to one. Some bookies are paying four places there. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I I like a few pound earlier and in the day at um, sevens, but uh, but the green bookie I seen paying four places there, but, but that that'll probably settle out five to one, six to one again tomorrow. Um, Paddington, it's hard to that that one a handicap two runs back, didn't it? Didn't that one? Handicap and Nace beat Jew for Leggett. Like, I know he might be improving, but he can't have improved that much. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see the likes of Sharian running into the first four either, because they're bringing, bringing it over. Um, but there's one there in the core as well tomorrow. If the handbrake, we were on at the last day. Wild Dollar, uh, it's eight to one with the green bookie. Chris Hayes is back on it again. Declan McDonough was on it the last year, but Declan McDonough hasn't rode a, a winner in, God knows, since Hannibal. But Smooth Tom got the run of the race the last day, and, and uh, the other one, was, I don't think, was off the air. 30,000 tomorrow. JP might want a few quid. I wouldn't put on, uh, anyone off backing him each way. Nibiru is a Sort of a, you wouldn't know the hell what's going on there. He was should have won the last. We couldn't get space, but he was he fast enough for the gap is the thing. Um. Right, I get this up. It's quarter past eleven. Just for newcomers, um, on on the bus, as I I don't do it in each way. Lucky fifteen like that, only with four big handicaps. It might happen again when Goodwood and Galway is on. I just thought there was an opportunity tonight or yeah, to make a I thought to be they were competitive, they were just out of the out of the frame. Um if we get four good handicaps again, we'll do that. And I always just say we do like for a Euro lucky fifteen. Um cost thirty quid. If it clicks, it's a clan dyke. Um but um we won't be doing that again 
maybe Galway we are in Galway Goodwood Week or Ascot if there was four handicaps between uh, uh, two at Ascot and two somewhere else that day but um, anyway bash the bookies over and out